Now looking at some details of layer three, at a high level to begin with, we call this the network layer. And as I mentioned earlier in this lesson, it provides a logical addressing as well as a best path determination. And that's fantastic. We'll get into some more details on that logical addressing and the path determination, but essentially what we're talking about here is IP version four being our logical addressing or version six, depending on the type of network that we work in and how current we are with new protocols. And the path determination is the ability for this data to be routed. And so of course we need to maintain a routing table which in this particular course as a whole, we are going to cover some basics on various routing protocols. Now, layer three provides the functional capability and the procedural means for transferring packets or what we also refer to as datagrams from one node on the network to another node connected to well, they say the same network, but really when you think that we can use this logical addressing to route traffic, well then that would tell me that layer three has the ability to route datagrams between addressed nodes within a network, not necessarily the same network. When I say the same network, I could be talking about anything though. I could be talking about my organization's network. If I wanna send traffic between organizations, well then I'm gonna use the routing capability at layer three to route traffic outside of my network, passing it off to a layer three device that has routing capability and hope that it reaches the destination that is not local to me. One thing about layer three that you do need to understand is that layer three is not guaranteed transport. We leave that to the upper layer protocol TCP. And so it is not reliable. Now every node on a network has an address. And this allows me to send messages to other nodes by taking the content of a message and the address of the destination node combining those two together into a packet and sending al along its way. Now the network is gonna have to find the best way to deliver or route these packets to the destination node. And it's common for our networks to have multiple paths to select between. I could take path number one, I could take path number two, or I could take path number three. It's up to my routers to figure out which is the best path to take. Sometimes we want to decide that, and that's where things like policy-based routing come into play. Now layer three provides a function called fragmentation for me. And what this means is that we can deliver fragments of a packet using separate routes and then reassemble these fragments at the endpoint. Typically we fragment packets because it is a larger packet than what the interfaces in the path can handle. So the interfaces have a maximum transmission unit, an MTU, and if we exceed that MTU, then the packet would need to be chopped up so that it would fit through the door. So here's an example of us taking a piece of data, a chunk of, of data, a datagram or a packet, and we're gonna send it from the left-hand side to the right-hand side of our screen here, but the MTU is too big, so we're gonna have to chop it up and send it. And when I chop it up and send it, my router can then decide to load balance across equal or unequal cost paths. So here we're gonna chop this up, and then we're gonna send this data, and then we're gonna put it back together at the other end. That is the high level functionality of fragmentation. So a number of things that layer three provides for us. Again, as a CCIE candidate, you should already know this, but oftentimes it's good for us to review the basics.